I believe there are only a small minority of us who would welcome any kind of wilderness experience, whether physical or spiritual for that matter. It seems so counterproductive. Out here, there is no indoor plumbing. The only mode of communication is face to face. You must live on as little as possible and manual labor is a necessity. I'm not sure which part of the day I prefer when camping in the wild, dawn or dusk. At dawn's first light, a vision starts to form, composed of the possibilities for a day of adventure. The vision continues to unfold as the morning rituals are executed, checking the sky for signs of bad weather, surveying the site for signs of nocturnal intruders, and most importantly, getting breakfast ready. Out in wilderness, we usually have no need for alarm clocks. Some crawl from the tent early, eager to enjoy the embrace of the rising sun. Others wake up when the sun becomes too bright to continue sleeping, or when the hiss of the stove and the smell of coffee brewing proves too irresistible to remain. From the warmth and comfort of the tent, Listening to the sound of the stove is enough to rouse even the sleepiest of campers. The first meal of the day is equally sublime as our morning cup of coffee was. In fact, we already had started to anticipate the palette of tastes and smells when the meals were planned and prepared weeks in advance of the trip. Part of the enjoyment of camping, so far removed from the city, is the preparation and extent of the meals we will eat despite having no refrigeration or hydro. I don't subscribe to the simple life or to any camping movement, but the question begs to be asked, what is real camping anyway? Is it real camping if you sleep under the stars, beside a fire, or under a shelter that you made yourself? Is it only real camping if you get up in the morning and swim no matter how cold the water is? Is it real camping if you canoe to your site, or can you drive up to the campsite Is it real camping if you spend all day at your site, cook over a fire, gather and chop your own firewood, portage at least twice in one day, and at night head to the nearest motel? That's not camping, that's a day trip. Sleeping in a tent is the first principle of camping. Real camping is any day and night you spend in a tent that gives you the mystic charge of being outdoors. Wilderness camping is really a function of doing more with less. 
The fewer familiar domestic trappings you have, the more you are opened to new possibilities for adventure and growth. There are very good reasons for going camping, especially if you have children. Camping and parenting are two activities that, from the outside, appear to be a perverse and willful abandonment of an easy life. Both are messy and demanding adventures. When camping, you can't control the weather, know exactly what site you'll be on, or anticipate the wildlife you'll encounter. Camping is unpredictable, and that's why it is superior to a Disney vacation or a timeshare in Florida. And just like having children, wilderness camping brings challenges and rewards that are unique and enriching. The camp kitchen is another fundamental part of the campsite. Camp cooking is more of a gentle adventure compared with the strenuous demands of paddling and portaging. All the camping handbooks of the last hundred years note how life outdoors increases the appetite. With the absence of grocery stores nearby, our appreciation for food is instantly more acute. Those who are modest or indifferent about their food at home become more animated and opinionated around the camp kitchen. Even the most fastidious eater gains a new appreciation for the qualities and attributes of the food that is served while camping. There are two ways to get around out here, traveling by land and by water. I prefer traveling by water. When choosing the waterway, inevitably your lake will end and the portage trail becomes your reality, forcing you to travel by land until the next glorious sight of water. The lakes and rivers are the motorways of the wilderness. They also provide an abundance of drinking water and countless activities for the camper to enjoy. by far the first choice of wilderness campers for their transportation needs. This vessel is perfect, light enough to carry, strong enough to support the weight of its passengers and all their gear, and quiet enough as to not interrupt the tranquility of the landscape. seat of a canoe is a beautiful perspective. While paddling from the middle of a lake in such close proximity to the water, you get a wonderful view of the landscape, a full 360 degrees. While paddling along the shoreline, your view of the land is quite unique from that of the hiker. Reaching the end of the lake is a bittersweet moment, the beginning of an arduous task with the far off hope of a new lake, new scenery and new adventures. In all reality, it's a welcome break, a change of body position, time for a pit stop and another opportunity to sit on shore, enjoy the view one last time and perhaps stop for lunch. Bill 
Mason is famous for saying that anyone who says that portaging is fun has either got to be a liar or crazy. While it's not my favorite part of the trip, there is something to be said for carrying your world upon your back. At times, the weight and distance takes its toll, and in the moment, portaging the next kilometer or so uphill seems like the hardest thing to do. At these moments, I force myself to think about how the portage is really an expression of the simplicity of life on the trail. All your worldly possessions are on your back. Life becomes very focused. So the portage, while being a lot of really hard work, helps to clarify the simplicity that is to be found in reducing your stuff to just the essentials. Inevitably, I always pack too much of this stuff I end up carrying on my back. When planning for car camping, anything that fits in the car is fair game. When planning for wilderness camping, I'm forced to debate with myself and others what will travel with us. Anything that is packed will need to be carried great distances by canoe and backpack. Careful planning and packing is essential for a successful and rewarding experience. In most social circles, preparation and planning is the opposite of cool, overtones of the military and scouts, rules, regulations. Making it up as you go along, youthful spontaneity, these are the values of city life. Nature demands preparation, the city hates it. The city rewards improvisation and mocks preparedness. Plans are made and dropped. If you are bored, hail a cab and move on. Out here, you just can't get a ride when you find yourself in a downpour, exhausted halfway through a portage, or find yourself in unexpected shallow water. Apart from the daily necessities such as cooking, setting up tents, obtaining drinking water, firewood, and possibly a paddle and portage or two, the rest of the day is open for leisure. Let's throw away the timetable and eat when we're hungry, not when we ought to. I want disorganized activity for my children. I want them to push through the boredom barrier and discover their own way. Being outdoors gives the children the space to explore. No matter how hard they try, they can't break nature, and although it contains dangers, as parents we have to let go a bit more than we are comfortable with and watch from a greater distance. I know it's not easy. The sensation is like an invisible elastic band tied between your heart and your child. As they go further away, the band tightens until the tension becomes unbearable. The resistance of this band builds inner strength and the benefits to their character makes it worthwhile.
time just before dusk is usually spent enjoying supper, collecting firewood, maybe a paddle on the still evening lake, and lighting the campfire. It's also a great time to sit on shore with a cup of tea and watch the color of the sky give way from the rich blues of the afternoon to the warm orange and reds of evening. This is the time of day when the cry of the loon seems to be most prevalent and the crickets begin to sing their nightly song. It seems that, at home, cooking supper, washing dishes, fetching firewood are all chores that few of us desire to do. Yet somehow out here, far removed from the distractions of our modern lives, we don't mind working for our daily needs. Well, it sure doesn't feel like work to me. Wilderness camping is a haven of opportunity to teach children while they are contained in such a pure environment and willing and eager to learn. In fact, the word camp comes from the Latin word campus, defined as a field or a plain. The university campus was invariably set on the periphery of towns and cities because the acquisition of knowledge, in the monastic tradition, is a contemplation and partaking of the eternal. So the activity must be located as far from the distractions of the city as is practical. As the light of the fire turns brighter than the glow of the night sky, everyone starts to congregate around the campfire. I refer to the campfire as the heart of the campsite, because around it, we all sit, relax, and keep warm. Our focus is drawn toward the light of the fire, which illuminates those of us sitting in its periphery. Campfire conversation is the opposite of the political and superficial banter we sometimes hear at work. It tends to be plain, honest, and without pretense. Someone once said that the campfire and free speech go together because camping is a place where the hierarchies of normal life can be suspended. I sometimes think it would be beneficial to revert back to heating our homes with wood and enjoy the benefits of some fire therapy as we end each day. For some of us, being out here is a way to restore our souls. For others, it is a means to shake up the very core of our being. In the quiet and stillness of wilderness, there is a voice that calls to us, a veil lifted from our mind's eyes. I am in desperate need of a shower, yet I have never felt so clean. I am at peace here. I am home, because I see and hear my Maker, the creator of both heaven and earth, and the beauty of this wilderness that surrounds me. Never mind the rapid tide